welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be setting up the Octopi 3D printing software on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. This will allow me to remotely control and monitor the 3D printer that I recently purchased. So let's go and get started. Right. In this video, we're going to be controlling and monitoring this Monoprice Mini Select 2 3D printer that we looked at on the channel a few weeks back with this Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And it's worth pointing out that the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W is a lot more powerful than the original Raspberry Pi Zero models, so it's suitable for running the Octopi software. And in addition to the board itself, we're going to need a micro SD card. This happens to be a SanDisk Extreme Pro 32 gigabyte card, but any card of eight gigabyte capacity or more will be fine. And we're also gonna be using this lead to convert from micro USB to a full size USB type A to plug in the 3D printer. And on top of that, we'll also need a power supply, a standard Raspberry Pi power supply. And then the final piece of hardware we're going to be using is this, let's bring it in. This is a lovely little Raspberry Pi camera. Let's give you a closer shot of that. And specifically, the name of this camera is very long. I got it from Pi Maroney, and it's called the Camera Module for Raspberry Pi Zero 160 Degrees Variable Focus. And that really gives you a clue about what's so good about this little camera. It's very similar to the Zero Cam cameras I've used before. In fact, it's still labeled Zero Cam. But the two differences between this camera and the previous ones I've used are one, it's got this wide angle lens, which will make it very handy for using monitoring a 3D printer from close up. And secondly, it's got variable focus to the extent we can just twiddle the end to change the focus, which is very handy indeed compared to using a tool on, on previous Raspberry Pi cameras. So this will connect to the end of the Raspberry Pi Zero using the standard camera connect we have on the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is slightly smaller than the one on other Raspberry Pi models. And if you're wondering, this camera costs me £15.90. You can buy very similar cameras for about $20 in the United States. And to mount the Pi and the camera together and to get them to be in a good position to monitor the 3D printer, I have 3D printed this, which is a nice simple little bracket, which I'll use with a few nuts and bolts and washers, as you can see down here. And the idea is the Raspberry Pi Zero will mount on the top. And I would note this mount will not work with a Raspberry Pi Zero if you've got GPIO pins fitted, but uh, I haven't got GPIO pins fitted to this Raspberry Pi Zero. And the idea is the camera connects here, loops around the top, looks out from there, and then the end of this can be used to mount things either to a block of wood through the outer screws, or I'm going to mount this to a tripod by having the tripod thread coming through here, and I'm going to use a spare spigot I've got in the top like that. Or you could use a wing nut or a standard nut or anything else which will secure this to a tripod. And if you're wondering if you can get hold of this file, yes, I will share this on Thingiverse, just in case you want to mount a Raspberry Pi Zero to one of the small cameras. Anyway, let's now put everything together. And there we are, everything is now set up. The Pi is nicely on this little tripod, although I've yet to connect it to the printer because we first need to set up the Octopi software. So, here we are on the website for Octoprint, which, as it says, is the snappy web interface for your 3D printer. And we want to download the software, so we'll go to Download, where top of the list we find Octopi, which is Octoprint for a Raspberry Pi. And there are instructions on this page for downloading the file from this page and installing it that way, but you could also install things directly using the Raspberry Pi Imager. So I'll click on Raspberry Pi Imager, which will take us to raspberrypi.com, where it's possible to download Raspberry Pi Imager. There we are, there's the download for Windows, although you can also get it for Mac or Ubuntu for Linux. And here on my laptop, I've already got Raspberry Pi Imager installed. So we'll choose our operating system, which it'll download. We want a operating system, which is for a specific purpose. There we are. And we want to select Octopi and the latest stable version like that. And I've got the micro SD card also plugged into my laptop, so we'll just choose that storage like that as well. And then the magic thing to do here before we click on right is to press Shift, Control, and X, which will bring up 
advanced options. And this allows us to configure Octopi, which we're going to be accessing remotely. And it's quicker to make these configurations here than doing it on the Pi later on. So specifically, I'm going to enable SSH, which we're going to be using to access the Pi. And I'll put in a fairly secure password because we'll be accessing it over the network. There we are. And we'll just go down. We're also going to configure Wi-Fi. And you'll notice that this software is clever. It's already picked up the details for my Wi-Fi network here, so I haven't got to put them in. But if it hadn't done that, you'd have to enter the SSID, the name of your network, and your network password. And I think this is pretty much all we need. There we are, going too fast down there. Where are we? Down there, we can also, oh, we'll do set locale settings as well. Might as well. And I think that's all we need to set here. It is. So we'll save on that. And then we'll click on write and we'll make sure we want to do it. This will delete everything on the micro SD card. We'll click on yes. And there we are. Raspberry Pi Imager will download OctoPi and write it to our micro SD card. Greetings. Here I am back again and I've now put the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi, and I've even remembered to take the lens cap off the tiny little camera. So let's turn on the power, and the Pi will spring into life, and we need to wait until there's no more activity indicated by the LED. And then we can go across to a web browser and visit the address HTTP Octopi Local. So uh, let's give that a go, cross our fingers. Here's anything happening, it's very exciting. Yes, we have success. Hello, it says. So let's go uh, next on that. And we don't want to restore from a backup. No, good to see you can do though. We'll just click on next though, like that. I think I'll have a bit more space on the screen with F11. We need to set up a username and a password for Octoprint, so I'll do that. There we are. And next again. It says configure connectivity check. I understand it's best just to accept the default here, so we'll enable that. And next. But I'm going to disable anonymous usage tracking, I'm afraid. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to next on that. But I will enable plugin blacklist processing, which seems to be a good idea. And again, we'll click on next. And we've now arrived at a screen where we can set up our printer. So first of all, I'll give the printer a name, uh, MP Mini. Select will do there. You could have lots of machines of the same model, so you can give a name separate to the model. Down here, I'll give the full model name. There we are. And we'll now go to print, bed, and build volume and put in the details here, or at least check they're correct. So rectangular form factor bed. Origin is indeed lower left. It has got a heated bed, but the print volume for my particular printer is actually 120 millimeters cubed, not 200 millimeters cubed. So I need to enter those values in here. And obviously what I'm showing you here is just an example from my particular printer. You need to be entering values in these screens for your particular printer. But this now all seems to be okay. So we'll leave that there. Axes, for now I'm going to leave on the default values. And we'll go across finally to hot end and extruder. This looks to be correct, 0.4 millimeter nozzle diameter, number of extruders is one. So I can do a next on that. And uh, there we are, what does it say? For your printer's safety, we should never leave our printer completely unattended. That's fine, I guess they have to cover themselves with what they say here, so we'll just click on finish. And there we are, we're now running Octoprint. So it must now be time to connect the printer. So we'll plug it in and switch it on. And I understand there can be some issues connecting to a Monoprice Select Mini. So we'll cross our fingers here and I'm going to click on Auto Connect on Server Startup and I'll click on Connect. And it says detecting serial connection. And that clearly hasn't worked. So I was right to understand there could be some issues. So rather than going to Auto, we'll go down to that and we'll set a board rate ourselves. Let's start on 25,000 and just give it a try. Let's try again. And again, we've failed, so I'll try some different values. And sadly, this is still not working, but I thought I'd show you it to uh, warts and all. So I need to uh, deal with this issue. There's nothing obvious I can do with down here. So I think I'll try 
disconnecting everything, checking all the leads, turning off and turning on again, and I'll come back to you. And here I am back again, and everything is now working. On this screen, we can see actual temperatures from the printer for the bed and for the uh, nozzle. Nothing's going on at the moment. It's not printing anything, so obviously they are just uh, baseline temperatures. But it's good to see things are working. And the way I got this to work is there is a plug-in to fix this known issue of connecting to a Monoprice Select Mini 3D printer. And basically, what you have to do is to go into Tools there and to go into Plugins, which is down here. All sorts of options in this fantastic software. And I've discovered that plugins don't like to show very well until you actually scale things down a bit. But if we just go down here, you will see somewhere down here, if I can find it, there we are, the Mayland Monoprice Connection Fix plugin, which is working very well. And clearly using this plugin is something that only matters if you're running this particular printer. So I won't cover that in detail in the video about how I got that working. I will leave a note in the video description in case that's something that's relevant for you. But anyway, here in Octoprint, we can now monitor the printer. We can print things on the printer, which we'll do very soon. We can also see the output from our webcam. There it is. And I'm impressed with the field of view from that tiny little camera. I'm not sure I've got it exactly in focus yet, but certainly even as it is, that serves its purpose. I can stick my hand in there. We can see what's going on on the print bed. And clearly if things were going wrong, we could come and sort things out on the printer. And one of the other tabs we have here is the time-lapse tab which has controls for taking basic time-lapse movies. Although I understand there's also a plugin called Optolapse, which gives you even more control of the time-lapse. Anyway, I've had a bit of a time sorting things out right now, so we need to test whether this prints or not. But first of all, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. Greetings. Here I am back again for a printing test. And you can probably hear the printer's fans whirring away in the background because I preheated the nozzle and the print bed just to speed things up in this demonstration. But if we go across to Octopi, you can see that the temperatures here on this graph are higher than they were in the last segment of the video. And down here we have the files section of Octoprint, which is currently showing quite a lot of files because it's showing files on the micro SD card in the printer. So we're going to the tool section there. We can only show files stored locally, which is currently none of them, but we'll upload a file. And I'm going to use this file here, which is some G code I've created in Cura for Benchy, which is a classic little test object for 3D printing, which some of you have asked me to print. So I thought I would do that. And there it is. So if I just now click on the print here, load and print at the end like that, and hopefully things will happen. That looks like things are happening. Let's scroll up so we can see that. And now as things get back to temperature, we'll fast forward in time a little bit. And there it is now working. It is starting to print out the Benchy object on the 3D printer. And if we look across in the tabs here, we can go to control and see that is happening on the camera. Yes, it's definitely taking place. We can look at the G-code viewer, which presumably will show us what's going on, what is happening on this particular layer. It's showing it graphically. Isn't that cool? That's excellent. I like that. And uh, other than that, we've got a terminal here, which is for showing us exactly what is going on, all the data controlling the printer, and the time-lapse tab. I haven't set a thing up in there. So we'll just check everything looks OK from the printer's point of view, if you see what I mean, or at least the Pi's point of view. Temperatures are looking OK. We can monitor those down here. But as with all things 3D printing, there inevitably becomes a point where you basically have to step back and let the printer get on with its task. Guess what? I'm at my desk. You probably guessed. It's been a very long day, you know. Anyway, I'm here so we can check out the remote monitoring of a 3D printer using Octopi, Octoprint. Because in the last few segments of the video, I've been running the web client on my laptop, about three feet away from where the 3D printer is. But here, I'm in my office, quite a distance from the garage, the garage, in which the printer is hopefully still printing out the 3D Benchy test. Fingers crossed it's still working. Shall we take a look? Let's bring up Octoprint. Here we are. Come and have a closer look. And as you can see, we can monitor the temperature of the printer. Things seem to be okay there. It's telling us how long the printer's 
got left to a print, how long it's been going, all that type of stuff. We can go to control and have a look at the output from the webcam. Yes, things are printing. I'm not making spaghetti, I'm making a model. Although I've just realized things are flipped, aren't they? Let's just sort that out. Let's uh, go into webcam in the settings and somewhere down here, I've already flipped it vertically to get the picture the right way up. I need to flick horizontally as well, perhaps. Will that work? Let's have a little look. And hopefully if we go back to, yes, that is that is the right view now, isn't it? Which is good. Not, not a brilliant image, but perfectly serviceable to see the printer's working okay. We can look back in the G-code viewer, what's going on with this layer. I'm waiting to see this, very exciting. Oh, look, you can see it's part of a boat because it's printing, part of a boat. And the terminal's still doing its thing and uh, we can continue to monitor what's going on. So I thought I'd just show you this to really make the point about what we can actually do with OctoPrint, but let's now speed forward in time to see the final result of the Benchy test. And here we are, printing has completed. All operations have come to an end here in OctoPrint. And if we look across to the print bed, the little Benchy model is waiting for us to inspect it. But I've got to remove some support structures first, so I'll get on with that. And here we are, we have the final result, which I think is actually pretty good as a printout from a printer that cost me £129. This is clearly not a perfect print, but it's, it's not bad. The, the Benchy test here has got all kinds of angles and overhangs and things to really test out a 3D printer, I think this is a pretty good result. And regardless of what you think about this particular printout, there is no doubt whatsoever that OctoPrint OctoPi has done its job. It's allowed me to use a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W to control and monitor a 3D printer. For many years on this channel, I've been making videos about the Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. And often people ask in the comments, what can you use these computers for? And I hope in that context, this video has provided another practical example of a Raspberry Pi in useful application. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, Please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.